about three years to produce something like Aesop's Fables. And it's because I'm faffing. I faff, I faff, I faff, I restitch, I, I pull back, I go forwards, I look at the old pieces. Usually I go back to a castle, I might have a look at what they've got in their collection. But it's been a real challenge for me because it's an arts and crafts design. And um, because my daughter Laura joined me in my business five years ago and is an arts and crafts specialist, I kind of felt I had to go that way a bit more. Um, I didn't really want to, to be honest. Um, but I started collecting the pieces and seeing that the stitches they were doing for fun, they weren't doing for effect in the same way that the professional embroiderers from the 17th and 18th century were, who were stitching to get something finished and sell it to an owner of a castle or country house. So when it was mainly men, it was a much different type of embroidery, I think. And when it became a hobby with women, they might have experimented, experimented more with the stitches, I would say, and bring in stitches um, instead of crossing over from black work into crewel work and stump work into crewel work like they did in the 17th century, they kind of played with everything. And um, one of the things that I've seen um, on two or three pieces that I've collected and in museums has been long and short buttonhole stitch. And that's actually great to do. If, you're, if you like doing long and short soft shading, long and short buttonhole stitch is actually great fun as well and has a fantastic effect. So, um, so that's taken a while to do, to be honest. And, and, um, and the other thing they did, just to explain a bit, was that they bought a base coat in. So say that big trunk there, that's got three layers of double thread. Can you just about see that? And then they've got, then what they did was they went back in with anything that they were using to finish off in the animal, they just popped it into the next door. So instead of casting off and thinking, I'm done there, they just added it as a little detail. And I just, I'm enchanted with that. I think that's a, that's fabulous. So everybody's Aesop's fable, which is that one, um, will be different. So I'm on my second go now with this. And they were also able to add colors. This color here is not on historic embroidery before dyes, but it's on embroidery um, since, since about 1850, a little bit later, when they brought in the, the, the synthetic finishes and the synthetic dyes, they could achieve much truer and much brighter colors. So you'll see the odd splash of something that you wouldn't necessarily see earlier on. Anyway, that's my, this is me in progress. We're living between houses at the moment. I have to just tell you, we're moving from holiday house to holiday house while my daughter um, isolates with her family in our house. So it's kind of, <laughs> we're, sort of and, but we're also working in this studio. We're all isolating in different addresses. So um, it was interesting grabbing everything for today. When you, when I watched your blocking video, um, you said don't wash things. I, I, unfortunately, I've got a house full of cats, and sometimes I end up having to wash things. What's the best way to do that? If we you have to, to, you have to unpick the front, take it back to, take it back to this, you know, just a cloth with an embroidery on. Take everything off it because the finishing cords also, uh, you know, can be random and, and unreliable. And what they call, um, anyway, anyway, there's a there's a word for it. Uh, that the, when the dye leaks, but yeah, so you take everything off and then re-block it. And then when you do that, you wash it when it's pinned out. So I personally have perfectly good shout water in the North of England. So I can just very gently use a cold shower. I mean, not hold it from a height. I don't want to felt the wool, but just literally run it through. And you must make sure the water goes underneath the embroidery as well as on top. So okay, thank really, you. really block it, but don't, I wouldn't loose wash anything because when you do that, you do unconsciously move it too much and you can felt it. But also the, the finish on the linen is brilliant because it makes, when you block it, this hasn't been blocked, but when you block it, you know, it goes rigid and flat. But when you wash it and you're going like this, you're going to make a crease mark in it when it comes out. So you must keep it flat. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.